In this video, we'll do a quick review of probability and conditional probability. The intuition behind these is that if you know something about the past, about what happened before, you can make a better prediction about what will happen next. So probability. The, a probability is a numerical description of how likely an event is. If you have a probability of one, for example, or a hundred percent, it means that the prob that this event is going to happen every single time. Every time you take a measurement of the event, it's going to be happening. It's a hundred percent sure. If the probability is zero or zero percent, then this event will never happen. You could be waiting for a trillion years and this is never going to happen. For example, the probability of you tossing a balanced coin, a fair coin, and it falling in both heads and tails at the same time is um, zero because it will never happen. And values between zero and one are things that are less likely or more likely. The bigger the number, the more likely the event is. So something that has um, a very low probability, like 0 0.0001, it does, uh, is something that doesn't happen very often, but that does happen. If something has a probability greater than zero, then it will happen. For example, um, the lottery. The probability of winning the lottery is astronomically small, so that if you're waiting to uh, win the lottery, it's never going to happen. However, every time there's a lottery drawing, someone wins the lottery. So it's an incredibly unlikely event, but it does happen to somebody. So if you played for a trillion years, at some point, it'll happen to you. Um, any event in something in the middle, for example, something that has 50% probability or 0.5, is something that in the long run will happen about half the time. So if you observe this event again and again and again and again, you will notice that every time you observe it is going to happen about half of the times. A typical example is a coin toss, for example. Let's say we have a balanced coin, one that is has a probability of 0 0.5 of being heads when you toss it, and 0 0.5 of being tails. This does not mean that on any particular toss you are assured of getting heads, for example, or tails. It means that if you toss 20 coins, you on average you will expect to see about 10 heads and 10 tails. What happens if you toss only two? We know that the probability of in one toss observing heads or tails is 50 50 so we have two tosses the probability of getting heads in the first one is 0 0.5 and the probability of getting heads in the second one is also 0 0.5 so we multiply these two 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 to get 0 0.25 so every time you toss two coins about a quarter of those times you're gonna get two heads. And by the way, we multiply them because these are independent events. One coin toss doesn't influence the other. What is the probability of getting uh, heads and tails? It's 0 0.5 times 0 0.5, 0.25, about a quarter of the time. Likewise, the probability of tails and heads and tails and tails. So if you toss Two coin. If you cause, toss a coin twice, about a quarter of the time you're going to see um, heads heads, another quarter tails tails, and 50% of the time you're going to see one heads and one tail. Um, this can continue to go on for many tosses. What would happen if we introduced a third toss? So we start here. And then we toss the coin and we get heads, 0 0.5. And then we go to a second toss, 0 0.5 to get heads again. And then we got, go to a third toss, 0 0.5 to get heads again. The probability of getting three heads in a row is 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 times 0 0.5, 0 0.125, or about 
12.5%, roughly 12%. We, uh, um, these events are each of them occurring on their own, but the probability of getting them in a sequence is the multiplication of the, of the individual probabilities. We call this a chain of probabilities or the chain rule of probabilities. So the probability of getting three heads in a row is about 12%. The probability of getting heads, heads, tail, tails is 0 0.125. Heads, tails, heads, 0 0.125. Heads, tails, tails, 0 0.125, and so forth. So if we um, toss going three times, about 12% of, uh, of the times we did that, Toying across three times, toying across, uh, <laughs> toss a coin three times. I apologize. We would get three heads. Um, but if we did this, for example, twenty times, fifty times, we would expect to see roughly the same number of um, heads and tails. Let's transfer this to words and to characters. Here we have the sentence: "I love the beach, the mountains, and the ocean." <clears throat> Let's remove the punctuation so that we only have, I love the beach, the mountains, and the ocean. Let's add edge markers, something like the beginning of a sentence and the end of a sentence to both sides. We would then have um, these tokens. We would have one of the beginning of the sentence, one of the word I, one of the word love, three of the word the, the beach, the mountains, the ocean, and one of all of the rest. We would in total have 11 tokens, and the most frequent one of them is the. We calculate the probability of a token by having the frequency divided by the total frequency. So imagine we had like a bag and then we put all of the words in the bag and then uh, we wanted to take one word out of this bag. There would be a 27% probability that the word that I get is the, just because there's more thus in there. There will be about a 9% probability that I get any of the others. So beach, for example, will have a 9% probability. But this is because we didn't know anything about the words. We were getting one at random. What would happen if we already knew something? For example, we have the word the, and then we want to know what happens next. When we have the word the in our document, we have the beach, the mountains, and the ocean. So what can happen next? Once we see beach, once we see mountains, and once we see ocean. So there's a 33% probability that after the, we'll see beach, 33% mountains, 33% ocean. We call these conditional probabilities because this new probability for beach depends on the fact that we have the word the, and we know that the word the is there. This formula is read, the probability of beach given the is 33%. Notice that the probability becomes higher because we know more about the context. In the table on the left, the probability of beach is about 9% because we were just trying to get it at random from the bag of words. But on the table on the right, we already know that we have the word the. So the, the other probabilities are just beach, mountains, and ocean. We can do this with characters as well. For example, let's pretend that the end, that the beginning of the sentence and the end of the sentence are single characters. And here we have the document, think some thoughts, which is just the beginning of a sentence, think some thoughts, end of a sentence. Here we have 19 different characters. We have one token of the beginning of the sentence, one token of the end of the sentence, we have the, um, the letter T three times. We have the letter H three times. So if we divide three by 19, we get approximately 
0.16 or 16 percent. It means that if we grabbed all of the characters and put them in a, in a bag, about 16 percent of the times we would get a T. The probability changes if we know that we have a T and we want to figure out what happens next. So if we have a T, that what things could follow? We have an H in think, we have another H in thoughts, and we have an S at the end of thoughts. So we can have two H's or one S. So the probability of finding an H given a T is 67%. As you can see on the right, the probability of the T on its own is 16%. But the conditional probability of um, H given T is 0 0.67. And I'm sorry, the probability of H is 16%. The probability of H given T is 67%. The probability of K given T is 0. Notice that the probability of K given uh, like S on its own uh, is on the left table, and this probability is about 5%. However, we do not have any instances of the two characters T, K. So there's no way that we can have a K given that we have a T. So the probability of this event occurring in our document is 0%. We could continue to do this. For example, we could go into trigrams. Um, here, we have the conditional probabilities of I given T and H and O given T and H. And we only have two THs, so it can be THI in think and THO in thought. So the probability of I given TH is 1 divided by 2, 50%. Also notice that the probability of K given TH is zero because we never have the trigram THK. By the way, we have seen these before. This is a Markov chain. If uh, you remember it, um, Andrei Markov counted the characters in Yevgeny Onegin and counted the probability of seeing a vowel, seeing a consonant, and then seeing vowel, 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 consonant, consonant vowel, consonant consonant. So the table with the four colors on the left could be considered a kind of conditional probability. The probability of a vowel given a vowel that preceded it is 17%. The probability of a consonant given a vowel which preceded it is 82%. Again, the probability of a consonant given a vowel is 82%. This is another place where we've seen those. Uh, this is a kind of, con the conditional probabilities happen in weighted finite state machines. If we have a, the description of cat and cap, and cat happens 75% of the time, cap happens 25% of the time, the conditional probability of T given CA is 75%. The conditional probability of P given CA is 25%. In summary, probability is a description of how likely is an event or how likely is it to occur. The event could be finding a word in a string, finding a letter in a string, or uh, finding a sequence in a string. Finding a sequence is useful because it means we have some information about what sequences have come before. Having information and knowing more about things will change our predictions. So if we know we have the letters TH, we know that maybe the next one would be E, maybe the next one will be I, but that it can never be K. So this improvement in our predictions and these changes in our predictions uh, mean uh, are called a conditional probability. It's a probability of something given that we know something else or that we have something else. In the next couple of videos, we're going to continue to look how we can use probability to analyze texts.